Just a word on myself, uh, I'm Massimo Goletti, I'm uh, director of uh, ITM organization in the real estate group. Uh, I will spend only a few words to tell you a simple, very, very simple methodology that we use. Uh, it's quite mature because we use it uh, since five years. Uh, to track uh, change requests on the, our traditional uh, ERP system uh, uh, with our analysis uh, that is performed using a very simple uh, UML tool. Uh, well, my need uh, as a manager of this environment is to uh, have uh, always uh, tracking uh, on the reasons behind each change request. Uh, this is because we have uh, several business partners operating on our systems on different projects. It's quite common that projects overlap uh, with another and uh, when we find something uh, in a configuration table we have to know why uh, it's there. Okay. Uh, I, will, I won't spend time on our uh, UML modeling. Uh, the first step uh, is to model a requirement. Uh, when someone asks our IT department about something, we create uh, a UML diagram, a uh, simple classifier, and uh, we describe uh, the requirement. Uh, the, the tool that we use uh, performs some automatic numbering, and that number, error, uh, 0522 will be one of the tracking key in uh, the change request system of SAP. A requirement is a very, uh, very simple description of the user requirement in business terms, in user terms, and this is what we are going to share with the user. Okay, uh, we we can have many, many uh, related requirements and we use the standard uh, uh, UML formulas to model the relationships among, uh, uh, among each requirement. Uh, this is our simple uh, property of the tools. Uh, as I was showing you before, each requirement has a number, and this is important, as a status, uh, we, we keep track of, of the advancement and basically, uh, a proposal, for example, a proposal requirement is, some, is just note. Uh, we, we don't know if it's a real requirement, then we verify it, we check with the user, we develop uh, quality assurance and uh, so on. There are several other attributes. Uh, we have a tracking of the key user that uh, gave us this requirement and this is a little quite a rich interface because we can uh, link to this uh, item, uh, files, uh, external resources and so on. Okay, uh, when we have finished with requirements we carry on an, an analysis in several ways and uh, uh, we identify uh, some work items. Uh, work items are uh, typical work breakdown structure of the project and uh, uh, each work item uh, usually it's a single activity or a number of uh, uh, things to develop that have a, a very in, uh, identified uh, scope and uh, are quite connected. Uh, Using work activity, uh, we can uh, check uh, if each work activity uh, address a specific requirement and at the end, uh, typically when we start a big project, we have perhaps uh, 50 or 80 requi different requirements scored by the project, we can check uh, that each requirement is properly uh, tracked uh, by a work item. And in the work item, we give, we give also some specification because uh, all the documentation of the work item are the specification web that we pass to the uh, developer or the external partner. The, the, the tool that we use uh, has also some uh, reporting functionality, so with some template we can produce exactly the specification document 
that is attached to the contract or what else. Uh, for example, here you see that the requirement is with the blue edge and is validated that this work item is white and is proposed just to understand quickly the status. Uh, while we are doing the, uh, the feasibility analysis or so on, we can uh, find different solutions for the same problem and we track in this way. We can have two different work items that are alternative. One is rejected and one is approved. Okay, uh, when we develop and we create a change request uh, on the system, basically the only thing that we do is to add a, a custom attribute to the change request with the number of the work item that uh, is related. This is a policy that is uh, strongly enforced with the, all the developers on the system and we also perform some audit on this. Uh, and uh, in this way, uh, uh, all the change requests that are related to the project uh, are identified and are classified with uh, their particular work items. Uh, usually uh, we track only the work item and not the requirement number. This is our uh, basic approach. When the change is very very easy and very very short we track only the requirement number without coding and without creating a work item. Uh, during the project we also model in the UML model all the deliverables of the project. Uh, the deliverables are modeled at a very high level. We don't replicate the workbench of uh, SAP uh, but we identify only what is uh, understood by the user. The, the element that the user uses uh, a query, a report, a new function or a new configuration of the system of a new process. This uh, uh, is very very important uh, uh, for uh, issue tracking and for future development because uh, when uh, in the future we have to impact uh, uh, requirement uh, using uh, this link we can understand what was done in previous activities. Uh, in the same way, we track issues. So, during the quality assurance phase, if we find an issue, the issue is linked to the uh, deliverable, and uh, if uh, the issue is coming in the uh, development phase, is linked to the work item. Okay, this was very quick. The uh, quickly, the methodology that we use uh, is a very basic methodology. Let's see how we uh, take some value from this. Uh, simple thing is that you, uh, if you select an artifact, for example, you can find all the issues that are related to that artifact. The issues, the creation date, the status, and so you have a, a quick view on the development status of each uh, work item. If you're you're able to uh, deliver it in the in production or not. Uh, obviously, uh, using, uh, for example, an issue number, with a P is an issue number, we can identify quickly all the change requests that were developed to, uh, to fix that issue. Or, using an item number, we can identify all the change requests that were developed for that item for that work item. Uh, another important thing when uh, working on big projects with external partners is that the tool creates uh, automatically from all the issues a report with all the documentation of the issue, the issue status, and this is very handy to exchange with external partners for uh, advancement meetings and so on. Okay, for example, uh, one of the last uh, projects that we made, the uh, issue report was 180 page. That was not because there was a, a exaggerated lot of issues, but because each issue has its documentation, screenshots, attached files, proposed solution, and so we have a single repository of all the 
uh, they work. Uh, another example, uh, if uh, I, I, so I find a change request, uh, the change request is tagged with a work item, I can find the work item on my tool and uh, using uh, a relationship understand why that work item is there, with which deliverable is connected with which issues and so on. So I can understand why that uh, uh, change request is there, why there is uh, some configuration change. Okay, that's all. I'll, I try to be very, very short in the six minute. Uh, we use a, a very economic tool that is Enterprise Architect, but obviously this is not a methodology linked to a particular tool because we haven't developed any integration with SAP and the tool we're using. Any UML modeling tool is uh, available. We are using uh, since five years uh, and uh, actually we have uh, some thousands of work items stored with their history and uh, it's quite effective. Thank you. testing process, uh, we perform a quality assurance session, a final quality assurance session with the users. They sign off uh, the quality assurance uh, document and then uh, we, we using, uh, typically we work with the external developer, but using this uh, work item number we check if the, all the change requests that are needed to in production a single work item are there so no it's not automatic no 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 there it's it's all it's always manual We, we could do that because uh, we, we don't have the need because we don't have so uh, great volume of uh, of changes, but uh, technically it's possible. Uh, it is also possible to integrate the tool with, uh, with the SAP system, so uh, release a single work item and have the SAP system to release all the related uh, change requests, but we do it manually, we don't have need for automation. Thank you, Massimo. We have a black now. I